Welcome, my friends. Welcome to Touching the Edge. My name is Drake and I'm very happy to see you today. I'm happy because I love to have this communion, this, this ongoing conversation in ways that we can lift our, all of us together. Some way that we can approach our lives in a way that has self-compassion and allows us to, to recognize that this place is challenging. It's, it's actually understandable that we might get confused or even make mistakes. And so we're having this ongoing conversation. And so, you know, we're answering questions specifically. And we have our friend Jen who says, let's hear some ways to manage sudden panic attacks and anxiety attacks where your body is taking over. So I want to, I mean, this is, I want to really kind of really soak in what she's saying here. Let's hear some ways to manage sudden panic attacks and anxiety attacks where your body is taking over, your heart and thoughts begin racing, your mind goes into tunnel vision, your brain becomes flooded and your and your brain has difficulty using logic, figuring out something that's that figuring out sometimes the best steps to take. And then she brings up one of the things that we've talked about, the de-escalation template, such as using the de-escalation template to get out of our bodily reactions. Any suggestions what one does to try to keep these at a minimum? Wow, that's really important. It's, it's really important. I, 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 you know, for me, and, and just to share my own history, a lot of where I really got so focused in practice was because I had a history of, of severe panic attacks. And it, it lasted for quite a long time. I mean, actually, all the way into childhood. I would spend nights, you know, worried about what was going to happen the next day or even, you know, sometimes what might happen in, in the night. And so it was a very, very frightening situation. And so for me, what ended up happening is I and I was living in an environment where I, there might be sudden attacks and it might come out of nowhere, you know, on the way to school or this or that. And I actually got into a state where I was sort of always in that heightened state. And then when I went to college, I had some difficult times in college and those panic attacks began to ramp up bigger and bigger and bigger. It, I, really panic attacks or anxiety attacks for me, it, that really doesn't say what they were. I was having terror attacks. And when these things would come about, it would be so profound that I, I just, it just didn't seem like there'd be any way I could handle it. I would just become terrified. And so what I learned to do over many, many years was I learned and created a process for myself. I, don't, I wouldn't even say that I created a process. I sort of uncovered it. You know, it's almost like when, when they talk about the statue of David and how that, that structure of the statue of David was already in the marble. He just had to chip away the parts that were not the statue. Same thing is true for me in my discovery of a different relationship to that anxiety. And so I want to say this again. Let's hear some ways to manage sudden panic and anxiety attacks where your body is taking over, your heart and thoughts begin racing, and your mind goes into tunnel vision. So we want to create a situation that we are not waiting to be in that situation to, start to choose what to do. We want to have a, a process in our mind that we already know what we're going to do, and, and it's well rehearsed. And so there's a lot of different things that I want to suggest that really can shift this relationship to anxiety. One is to have a different sort of framing as to what the anxiety actually means. What's the point of the anxiety? Why is it there? To me, anxiety, just like every other emotion, has its time when it's appropriate. It's much, it's much like having a gas flame on. You don't want that flame on too long. You want it on just the right length of time. And so that anxiety is actually a signal for us. One of the ways to me that we shift our anxiety is recognizing that we may not be actually understanding what it's expressing to us. Imagine an individual who feels like it's vitally important to express something, but it's not getting across. And all of a sudden it, that individual gets more and more upset. In a way, that's our relationship to anxiety. So to me, anxiety is a call to action. When we reframe it, when we, when we reframe what it means, 
it actually has a purpose that actually progresses us. So that's one element of it. Secondarily, please understand the difference between primary and secondary emotions. Primary emotion is, is the anxiety. You feel the anxiety. The secondary emotion is you feel anxious about feeling the anxiety. So to me, what I learned to do over time was to shift my relationship from the primary emotion to the secondary emotion. Meaning I learned how to not have anxiety about having anxiety. When you are anxious about being anxious, it ramps out of control. So it's really about coming at this from all kinds of different ways and having different relationships to it. Anxiety, if you come to it with the realization that it's asking you to do something to improve your situation and circumstance. Now, one of the things I feel is really important in shifting anxiety and really all states of emotion that just make us like lose our focus, where we just become absorbed in it, as you said, the tunnel vision. And so the tunnel vision is one of the things that we want to step out of. Now, another element that I really suggest in managing anxiety is to write down a list of 10 state changers. The state is what you're feeling emotionally in the back of your mind right now. We always have an emotional state that's sort of our background state. And that, that background state, that emotional experience in the back of your mind right now, on some level, we, we tend to think of that as our baseline. That's who we are. I want to suggest that's not who we are. It's simply a bubble that we find ourselves in right now. If you were in a red bubble, everything you see would be colored red. But if you pop that bubble, then all of a sudden it all shifts instantaneously. So we want to learn how to pop that state that we feel stuck in. And so one of the things I suggest that we do is to write down a list of 10 state changers. 10 different things that you know when you activate this process, it tends to shift you. One example, I mean, it's a ridiculous example, but I've often said that if you jump into an ice cold lake, there'll be just a moment at least that you're not going to be focused on the election. So what I am suggesting is that immersive practice is a great way to changing our state. So writing down a list of 10 different ways that you know will work to support you in changing your state. Another one is to take a hot bath with Epsom salt. That magnesium begins to calm, our, calm us. And then write down another one. What's another state changer? Maybe listening to classical music is a state changer for you. So you get yourself into that hot bath and you put on that classical music. Activate one after, the, of, of, one after another down each one of the 10 state changers. Write down 10 things that work well. Other elements that work well is taking a nice long walk. Uh, and, and often with a vigorous arm swing. Uh, cooking can be a state changer. Cleaning can be a state changer. Singing can be a state changer. So activate your process of changing your state. I wanna encourage you right now to write down a list of 10 different things that work for you. And when you are having that anxiety experience, remember, if you improve some area of your life, you, your sense of anxiety will begin to lift. We want to work on the secondary emotion, not the primary one. Because if we become okay and at peace with how we feel, how we feel changes. So let us know what you are doing to shift your relationship to anxiety. What works for you? What are some of your state changers? Thank you so much for joining. I'm so very, very grateful for your presence. I'm going to ring the bell, and I'm going to ask you to listen carefully. Here we go. So one final element I want to express is this feeling of anxiety. That's not who you are. It's something that you're experiencing. I bring my hands together and I bow to you. Namaste. Thank you.